I, I think we're underreacting to people who are passionate about feet. And we're underreacting to things across the league right now. So let's get into it. Um, the family text chain is insane right now. Uh, okay. We are underreacting to the Lions and this run that they're on right now. Yes, the Lions, we're starting our show with it. They've won four of their last five. They're climbing right back into the thick of the NFC playoff race. Let me see this here. Yeah, look, they're two games back of Seattle for the final wild card spot in the NFC. They're playing their best football at the perfect time. The Lions have the third best record in the NFL of the last five. They're fourth offensively, fourth, you guys. And the most shocking out of all of this, they've allowed the sixth fewest points per game in the league over that span. This defense was historically terrible early this year. But you got to give credit to Aaron Glenn, their DC, and they've figured it out completely. But uh, I don't know why I'm telling you even anything. You can just listen to the vocal stylings of their head coach. That was the best game we played all year, Joe. That was the best game. We are playing our best football right now. It's five weeks in a row now. We're playing our best football, and we're in December. That's a credit to you guys. I know what we are, man. I know what we are. You should know what you are. We talked about the skilled players. You had to own it today, man. You had to rise up. Receivers and DBs. And how about that quarterback? No one talks about Jared Goff. He's been forgotten since that trade. But he deserves some credit. I'm glad Dan Campbell gave it to him there. I love that locker room. He had to watch Matthew Stafford take over his team. Those are his Rams. And he took them and won a Super Bowl last year. That couldn't have felt good. And now he's having a moment in Detroit. You love to see it. Hard not to root for it. Over the last five games, he has the third best record in the league. Hello, he's top 10 in passing yards and passer rating. However, this season ends up, you can see him building confidence, gaining with each passing week. And the guys on the team are really rallying around him. It's good to see. This team is building something special. Evan Fox, Foxy over at the McAfee Show, says brand new Lions, not the same old Lions. It's true, and I hope we're screaming it from the rooftops, and I think soon everyone should. Uh, and, if you know, they are different. They feel different. They look different. I was looking at the Fandles more book yesterday. They're uh, favored over the Vikings. I'm sorry? In some big way. It's interesting. Uh, and if you know that, so that being said, if the Lions can find a way to beat the, the Vikings, who are ten and two this weekend, then you start enjoying and welcoming and embracing a playoff possibility. It starts to become less of a pipe dream and more of a reality. And I don't think anyone will be under underacting to these brand new Lions, Evan Foxy. Uh, after that, okay, let's move on here. I think. We are underreacting to the greatness that is Devontae Adams. And if you don't watch Red Zone and you're just watching your team and you're missing this, let me fill you in. Because just like the Lions, the Raiders, they're getting right back into the thick of the race. Take a look. They've won three straight. They're two games back of the Jets for a wild card spot. And they've gotten back into that playoff hunt on the back of their wide receiver. He's, <laughs> he's really feeling himself too, but he's going scorched earth on everyone leading the league in every receiving category, averaging almost 30 yards a game more. 30 yards a game more than the next closest guy, Justin Jefferson. And if these numbers aren't impressive enough, and they are, and they are, consider the fact that he has faced the Broncos' number three ranked pass defense and the Colts' number four ranked pass defense in that span. Those are two stifling pass defenses. And the scariest part is that he really is only getting better and more in sync as weeks go on. And on Sunday against the Chargers, what a game. 177 yards, two touchdowns. Love this first touchdown. Up, oh, see ya, see ya, see ya. And you know I love the Chargers. I don't love to see this, but Adams is related to me. So he's making ridiculous catch after ridiculous catch. And what he does to Asante Samuel Jr. here, it's just unfair. What are you supposed to do for your Asante Samuel? Nothing. Uh, and it, Christian Watson has a place in our show a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. But it's got to have the Packers feeling a kind of way right now, too, with just how dominant of a player he is. And with the level that Devontae is on, and then you look at the run game, and Josh Jacobs running wild as the NFL's leading rusher. Also, no one talks about that. And Chandler Jones, big acquisition, finally heating up. He had a three-sack game in that win as well. This isn't just a, oh, Vegas? Kind of sure we there's plenty of life in Vegas, and they're taking on the banged up Super Bowl champs? Question mark. How do what the Rams, the shell of the lifeless, soulless Rams that we saw all season long? Injuries, of course, part of that. They have them on Thursday Night Football, Amazon Prime Video. Devonte, uh, <laughs> Devonte and Jalen, 
we get Devontae and Jalen in front of a national audience, I am ready for that game, and I'm ready for them to be in the playoff picture. All right, we've got Darius Butler on the show. Listen, Darius, we got to get an exorcist, uh, someone to sage us. Dar Darius, I'm quitting sports betting. I'm out. Don't See do ya. it. Yep. No, 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 we're out, we're out. Only one.